Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be together with you this morning to worship our Lord, to be drawn to that wonderful cross where our Lord laid down his life to save us from our sins. May we see Jesus is the perfect Son of God, and he's our perfect Savior. The Lord bless us as we gather, as we gather in his name. We open with our first hymn, hymn 387. <laughs> What does this mean? 
I don't want to get into too many details, whether you think it's a little fake, if you don't like the coloring, the lighting. Just, what is that? <coughs> God's grace, you are able to say along with me, that's Jesus died on a cross. But is that it? Is that all it is, the factual evidence that Jesus is dying on the cross? Our text for today helps us to see deeper into this picture. This is Jesus who is here showing himself to be the perfect son, perfectly obedient to his father. And this picture shows you and me, Jesus is our perfect savior. Keep in mind that these words written in the letter to the Hebrews is written to a group of Christians that are suffering persecution because they are Christians. Well, many of these have Jewish background and they're not being persecuted. The Jews aren't, so they're tempted. Let's just go back to talking about Moses. Let's go back to talking about that old wonderful covenant that one made on Mount Sinai. The tabernacle, the temple, oh, those were glory days. Let's talk about how good we had it back then. Let's not focus anymore on this Jesus. Well, the writer of this letter <coughs> keeps reminding the audience, and he reminds us here this morning, Jesus is our glory. He's the one that's greater than Moses. His covenant is greater than that one made on Mount Sinai. The new tabernacle, the new temple, that's heaven. That rest that the people celebrate in the Old Testament is an eternal rest for us now in heaven. And those sacrifices made of those animals, that's all taken care of with Jesus. In our text, we see a picture of Jesus just like is portrayed here. The author writes that Jesus learned obedience from the things he suffered. You look at this picture, you're reminded of great suffering. Nails driven through his hands and feet, crown of thorns brushed into his skull, back burning because it's been whipped to a pulp. Difficult to breathe because you're hanging up on that cross for six hours. <clears throat> Difficult to say anything. Thirsty. Jesus is suffering. But why? And why all of this? Why this Jesus did even come here in the first place? If he's the Son of God, why be born? Why be willing to experience hunger and thirst, to know sweat, to know being tired, being weary, being disappointed, being sad? Why do all of that? The author, the writer to this, of this letter to the Hebrews says, in the days of Jesus' flesh, a reminder that he was just like us. Suffering from the things we suffer from each and every day. And during this time of suffering, what did Jesus do? We're told he prayed. With loud cries and tears. Jesus wept over the death of his friend Lazarus. He was deeply troubled there in the Garden of Gethsemane, knowing full well what's going to come, the cup he has to drink. What can you do when you know all of these evils, these things take place in this world? Jesus prayed, and he prowled loudly. He prayed loudly in the Garden of Gethsemane. He prayed loudly on that cross, my God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? That's what I see looking at that picture, the word of God enlightening me evermore. Really the suffering Jesus had to endure. And maybe it's because of this full story that the world says, yuck. 
I don't need this. Why would God allow his own son to suffer in such a way? You Christians, why do you bother going to the house of God, calling on a God who you say can save you just like Jesus prayed, but he doesn't? Why? What glory is there in, in all of this? The glory in all of this is, as the letter to the Hebrews says, Jesus is perfectly obedient. In this picture is complete obedience, doing exactly what his father had sent him to do. It is going to the cross, the Lamb of God, to take away the sins of the world. It is going to the cross to crush the power of the devil, to swallow up death in victory. This is the hour when the Son of Man is glorified, when He shows Himself to be the perfect substitute, the one who is holy and righteous, truly holy and righteous. Do we need such a Savior? Keep in mind that God had initially made Adam and Eve to be in his image. They were holy and righteous. They were perfectly obedient. But that all changed. And they coveted that fruit and ate of it, hoping to become like God. Now they knew what sin was, and now there was a part of them that desired it. They desired to do things their way. The image of God was lost from Generation to generation, sinful nature was passed down. And as much as these Jewish Christians would love to hold on to the glory days of Moses or to Abraham or David, the Bible clearly shows us they were not righteous. According to the law, they all sinned, fell short of the glory of God, and as such deserved death, which they did all die. But here comes the one who is perfect, perfect in his obedience, who came born under the law to redeem us from its curse, to do everything his father commanded him to do, which was even to drink of this cup. Jesus became obedient to the point of death. Look at that picture and say, yes, that's Jesus dying on the cross, but that's him being perfectly obedient to his Father. And because he's perfectly obedient to his Heavenly Father, you and I can also look at this picture and say, he's my perfect Savior. Some may look at the picture of Jesus and say, that's a nice guy. A good guy, great example, who was willing to lay down his life for people that disrespected him. We need more of that in our community. Yes, it is indeed marvelous, the love and mercy Jesus shows to people. But consider why he's doing this. He does this to seek and to save the lost. He sheds his blood for the forgiveness of sins. Does this look like he accomplished his goal? Apart from the Holy Spirit, we'd say, no, it doesn't look like he really was successful. He died trying. Died trying. He called on God who we thought could save him, and he didn't save him. The world would save him. But we look at this picture, and we know the full truth. This is not a picture of Jesus' defeat. This is a picture of him being victorious. Because what did Jesus say on the cross? After he had said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He said, in Greek, one word, for us three, it is finished. 
It's completed. It's perfect. Our text translates it this way. He was brought to his goal. He finished what he came to do. He finished what he came to do, and that was to save us, to forgive us, to redeem us, to reconcile us to God the Father. It is a done deal. You look at this picture, you see victory for you and for me. Sin is taken care of. The devil has no power over us. Death is swallowed up in victory. Our text reminds us Jesus is the source of eternal salvation for everyone. He's that source. This is why he said in John, I, I will be raised up. I will draw all men to myself. People will look to me hanging on this cross and say, I'm saying I'm your Savior. Now does everyone believe that? No. Jesus is the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. All who look to this Jesus and say, yes, you are my Lord. And to obey the gospel and believe in Jesus, don't pat yourself on the back and say, yep, I chose Jesus. I got it. I understand it. Thank and praise the Holy Spirit who revealed that truth to you. That you can see and understand who this is and why he's doing this and what it has accomplished. That you can say the day that Jesus died, it is Good Friday. Because Jesus is my perfect Savior. And one more little note, wonderful note about Jesus, our perfect Savior. The one who has gone into heaven to prepare a place for us. We're told in our text. He was designated to be a high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek is one of those unique individuals we really don't know much about. He was a king, king of Salem. He was also a priest. Appeared to Abraham. We really don't know much more about him. How interesting, the name Melchizedek means king of righteousness. King of righteousness. Who is Jesus? He is just that. He is the one who is perfectly righteous, that substitute that laid down his life on the cross, and he is our king, living, ruling, working everything out for our good. And just in the verse prior to our text, another verse from the Old Testament says that Jesus is made in the order of Melchizedek, he is priest forever. You look at this picture, you could look at it simply as, oh, poor guy. We look at it and say, that's a perfectly obedient son. The son of God, who laid down his life on the cross. Because he was willing to do that, that's my Savior. Here is my righteousness. Here is my access into heaven. Here is the narrow gate through which I pass. Apart from myself, apart from the Lord, I cannot enter heaven. But by grace, through faith in Jesus, this is mine. And dear friends, this is yours. Look to that cross. See that perfectly obedient Son and acknowledge He is your perfect Savior. Amen. Peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard you and keep you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
Father, you are the giver of every good and perfect gift. We thank you for the blessings you give to us each and every day. We thank you especially that you've given us your Son, Jesus Christ, who is the source of all hope and true joy. You give us in him eternal life. Help us to honor you with our thanks and praise. Help us to serve you all the days of our life. Bless these offerings. May they be given to your glory and further the spread of your gospel, both here and throughout the world. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. <laughs> We continue with prayer. O oh God, Heavenly Father, lead us to see your holiness and goodness through your word. Make us to see that we are your creation, created to honor and serve you with our lives of obedience. Make us also to see that you are our gracious God, who does not treat us as our sins deserve. In your love for us, you saved us from our slavery to sin, and have made us to be your redeemed children and heirs of heaven. You have done this through Jesus Christ, the atoning sacrifice, who takes away all of our sins. Lord Jesus, draw us to yourself to look to you alone for our salvation. Make us to see that it is through your blood of the new covenant that we have full redemption for all our sins. When our sins trouble us and our conscience condemns us, lead us to the cross where we see the price you paid to ransom our souls from sin, death, and the power of the devil. Move us now and always to glorify you as our Savior. O Holy Spirit, create in us a new spirit that delights in hearing and obeying your word. Make us to be your faithful followers. We thank and praise you alone for the gift of faith and eternal life. Help us to share your word with others that you may teach them to know you and believe in you for their salvation. Make our hearts to be your temple and rule in us that we may live for you. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. We also join in praying the prayer he has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We continue now with the order of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good and right so to do. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord who brought the gift of salvation to all people by his death on the tree of the cross, so that the devil, who overcame us by a tree, would in turn by a tree be overcome. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Take and eat. 
This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
take and drink. This is our Savior's precious blood, which He poured out for you on the cross for the forgiveness of all of your sin.
is a great thing for me personally to be here in God's house. It's great for you too, but virtual worship, online worship, it's just not the same. It's good to be with you, brothers and sisters in Christ. Great to worship our Lord together. And great to look forward to Holy Week that's coming up quickly. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday. We're planning, a, it'll be a first for me, the whole procession of psalms. So kids, you'll have to show me how it's done. Uh, Monday, Thursday service in the evening. Good Friday service in the afternoon. In the evening, those will be uh, different services. And Easter morning, planning on two services uh, as of now, uh, 6.30 and 9 a.m. Both of those will be different services too. We invite you to come and worship our, our risen but also our, our crucified Lord. Um, thank you from our family for all the cards and words of encouragement you've given us during the time we were under quarantine. Um, just to clear things up, my wife and I never did get COVID. Uh, the kids did and didn't seem to suffer really at all, except having to be around mom and dad more. <laughs> But we didn't get anything, thanks be to God. And we got tested, and we we're negative. And on top of that, we even got the vaccine already. So I, with God's help and the wisdom they, that doctors have been given, by God, uh, that much more protected. But still, we're, our time is in God's hands. We trust in the Lord above all things. Um, Following church, if you would like to support Northland Lutheran High School, this is a new opportunity to buy a coupon book. It's $20 it costs and $14 of that goes to the school. Um, it does have coupons for Scotty's Pizza here in Marshfield, among other places. And uh, following the church service, the children, Sunday school children, will practice their Easter song. The adult choir because I'm not very organized, hasn't met to talk about if we want to sing a song. Uh, I suggested to at least one person we sing a song, so I'd be happy to talk with the adult choir um, after church today, see if we can practice a song quickly. And then now we'll watch this month's edition of the Kids Connection. And, oh, Glenn? Uh, just, just to mention, there is some pictures of some signs that a lacrosse sign has sent us. They are out on the table by the library. Please look at them and just put a check mark on the one you like. If you have a comment, talk to the council about it. Um, it's something we want to get going. They're only going to supply the sign, the, it, 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 the sign part of it. The brick laying and the concrete work will be done by us. So. To keep the cost down, the cross sign is the only company that returned my calls. So therefore, I guess we're going to go with the cross sign. Uh, but the pastor and I have met with a representative. He was a very nice gentleman. Um, they, I think they give 10% off to churches. Uh, I, I don't have the price. I don't know if you, did you receive the price on him, Pastor? I did not. Okay, so I guess first we're going to look at him and see what we like and what we don't like about him. So look at him and let us know any comments what you have about okay thank you thank you very much for the reminder <clears throat> god bless you all <clears throat> 